Before we get into it, a reminder that we, we are moving to the CLNS network, or we have moved and are very happy to have done so, moved to the CLNS network. And as a result, we're changing podcast feeds. We're actually moving back to the OG First of the Floor podcast feed. So just search First of the Floor in your favorite podcast app. You will find us or on YouTube. You will find us. Uh, the link to that feed will be in the show notes below. If you're lazy, scroll down, click on that, subscribe to that feed. Uh, if you weren't already subbed there, that is, like if you discovered us through Celtics blog, please head over to that new feed and subscribe. The numbers suggest there has been a slight downtick in listeners, obviously, as we move off the very, the much more popular Celtics blog feed. So please, if you're listening there, please head over there and subscribe. All right, let's get into it, guys. Some pre-game notes. Happy birthday, Marcus Smart. We're going to leave with the positive Marcus Smart vibes before we before we pivot a little bit. 29 years old, the man, Marcus Smart. Happy birthday uh, today, yesterday, by the time you're listening. Happy birthday to Jason Tatum, who turned 25 a few days ago. For this game, no Al Horford, no Rob Williams, no Jason Tatum. Blake Griffin and Mikey Moose starting in this one. Before we get into the game, guys, Jake, I'll, I'll start with you because you currently look the most worried here if you're watching on YouTube. <laughs> Just exactly how worried are you about the current state of the Celtics? Hmm. I never thought that the Celtics were far and away the best team in the NBA. Hmm. Like there was not a gap between them and the box. I think we just have to accept that this team does this to us between one to five times per year. Um, <laughs> sometimes it can be once or twice and it could last a week. It could last half a season like last year. Um, going back to the Brad Stevens era, um, I do think that these guys have earned the benefit of the doubt to perform when it comes to the playoffs. You obviously want to be peaking at the right time. And this feels like eerily similar to the first half of last year, like even as similar as like the Knicks game themselves right double over time just can't just cannot close these games for some reason but even in the midst of that like the utah game that they lost when utah made like 33s it felt always felt like a really good team was in there and we know for a fact that one of the best teams in the nba is in there from the second half of last year all the way through the playoffs the first two months of the season we beat the Sixers, we beat the Cavs, like literally two games ago like yeah. they are in there these warts, they're going to pop up in the playoffs. Like I think at this point, we just have to accept there's going to be between one and two and maybe three games per series where they like just, they like, they lose, they lose it. Game, game three against Milwaukee, game three against Miami, game four against the, the Warriors. Um, it's just, can they survive one or two bad games in the playoffs per series? I tend to think they can because the Bucks are good for two terrible games per series as well. Offense will fall apart. Sixers are good for, at least two between sulky and bead and concussion two calls, Harden. you mean <laughs> yeah right like how many and then um the Cavs not worried about we seem to play them really well outside of the knicks who seem to be just like the perfect team um all the other teams have real flaws as well yeah avoid mm. the knicks at all costs and you're right they are in there somewhere we've just got to dig through it and find them in the mud jackson you know to what degree are you concerned or worried about the current state of the celtics uh, long story short, I right now am a five out of 10, which okay. doesn't sound much. Um, <laughs> we've definitely seen some very concerning habits, uh, from this team in the very recent past. I still have reservations about Joe Mazzola, his rotations, his overall game plan. Um, I think we're moving away from the defensive identity that we seem to build that historic offense offense off last season. That seems to be gone. Um, so look, it, it would be higher, but I don't want to get too positive just yet. I know we'll save that for the back end, but all I was, all I'm going to say is, man, I don't think you can really justify anything over like a seven out of 10, if that's your scale, mm -hmm. we're still six weeks from the playoffs and everyone's healthy, you know, maybe bar Rob Williams, hamstring and Dino Gallinari, who we haven't even seen yet. Everyone is still in pretty relatively good health. So playoffs are about six weeks away, six weeks away for some Five, perspective, six weeks ago. We were on a nine-game win streak. We just beat the Warriors. So a lot can change in six weeks. And I'm backing on this team that we know is in there that Jake alluded to that's come out of adversity more times than I can count. I am still holding on hope. And I still do believe that that team is going to show up and is going to peak at the right time. Um, I'm not seeing any great evidence of it right now. But as I said, 
still six weeks away. So I'm okay for now. Yeah. How about I'll, you, Ben? I'd say I'm a six and it's only to, to elevate it by, by one number from yourself, Jackson, but just the timing of it, just that we're on this sort of downhill slope towards the playoffs last year, as much as the beginning of the season sucked, man, it was good to be peaking as we're heading into the playoffs. Like those were some good feels and now panicking a little bit like fingernails along the, the wall as I'm like being dragged down to the basement, Texas Chainsaw Massacre style. I don't know why that analogy just popped into my head. That's how I feel. I'm going to have to cut that. Uh, yeah. But just the, the timing of, of the, the slump here is concerning. But, you know, like you said, both of you, we know so much about this team. No NBA team is perfect. Like the Bucks are a great team. They give up a lot of corner threes. The Celtics are a great team. Currently, they're giving up, for example, a lot of dribble drive penetration to folks like Emmanuel Quickly. You know, these things are happening. The the Celtics are not playing at their best right now, but they have shown us, even in this recent stretch, periods and examples of their best basketball, like the end of the Knicks game, where they turned up, you know, the volume defensively. They turned it up to 11, played two minutes of amazing defensive basketball and forced overtime before ultimately shooting the bed. Uh, and again, against the Cavs today, which we're about to get into, some serious bed shitting there by one Grant Williams at the free throw line as I give you guys a number of timestamps to write down. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm on so, it. <laughs> I am worried. A lot of my worry has to do with the, the timing of the slump and not so much the, uh, I guess, the um, magnitude of the slump because we've seen it all before. Does that make any sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, I think we're coming from the same, yeah, we're, we're coming from the same path here, but I don't know. It's just like, even though we've seen the trends start to go down and sometimes it feels like it's going down quite violently, I just think, I, I just still think there's plenty of time to turn it around, even if like recent history suggests that we're, we're on that downward trajectory, I still think we're able to turn it up. All it takes is a week. Like all it takes is one series. Like if we get the, like as bad as it would be to maybe get the heat, like maybe we need like a tough first round opponent to just like, to really like, if we get the nets, for example, of course, what are we going to do? Take them lightly. What did we not do last year? We had Kevin Durant and Mm -hmm. Kyrie Irving and Jason Tatum played maybe Mm -hmm. the best wing defense um, since peak Kawhi Leonard. Like maybe that's, that's what it takes um, is a series like that. The doldrums of the NBA season, et cetera, like coming out of the all-star break. I mean, like our Slack channel was, we were buzzing. We were like, this is what we needed. We needed the break. JT hit 10 threes. We were all so excited. And it has not been... Why were we excited? That was a terrible, terrible I feeling. Know. Terrible idea. <laughs> um, what is wrong but like, <laughs> it's okay. You know, um, plenty of time to, to turn it around. Um, and all seriously, all it takes is, is a week and we know that it's in there. So um, just hold on. Don't let them take you down to the basement, Ben. Yeah, you're so right. <laughs> Day to day, it is hard. I, I, it, listeners no out there, you know what I'm talking about. You guys know what I'm talking about, but you're, you are absolutely right. Zoom out, big picture view. If, you've, we'll, if we'll, you haven't um, watched the playback stream with us, which we do for some Celtics games, <laughs> Ben's watch Ben's face as we watch one of these leads evaporate. It's just that analogy in facial expressions. He's just <laughs> grabbing, his, grabbing his head. Not that yeah. I'm not also upset, but it's, it's glorious. Proper we body gotta, horror. Yeah. <laughs> 